No! Nah! What's up? No makeup? You can see my hair? And my face, sort of. But what we're going to do today is something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of the Connecticut halftime. And uh, this is Rudiments 201, the Connecticut halftime. Because if it's Rudiments 101, you're pretty much not playing the Connecticut halftime yet. So the Connecticut halftime is a solo. If, if you're even looking at this, you know. Or it's not a solo. It was basically some sort of communication for something that nobody really knows because no one knows who wrote it or where exactly it originated. But I believe uh, if somewhere around the early Civil War, like some guy, H.C. Hart or something like that, there was something that he might have written that was called something like Rosebud Reel that looked a lot like this, but whatever. You're going to play the Connecticut halftime. There's a lot of variations you can find in a lot of things. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the first, like, phrase up to the... If you're looking at the music, because if you're not looking at the music, you just need to go ahead and get the music and see what's going on. And uh, I'm going to play it up to that first point. Then I'm going to tell you what I think. And then we're going to go from there. Okay? And I'll count it off, like, however I'm going to do it, okay? I played no seven stroke rolls and I did not play the 15 stroke roll where it says sometimes in there the 15 stroke roll because for the period th that would not be there as far as uh, don't even want to get into it okay I believe it should be as simple as possible because in the day which is it we're really in the day in the 18 a 60, 1860, basically, it had to be as simple as possible because it was communicating something. It was saying either, help, hey, everybody wake up, hey, everybody time to go to bed, hey, let's all get together and eat, or something, okay? So... You'll see some things either on YouTube or even uh, some things in print that use seven strokes all the time. I even remember seeing something one time that used nine strokes. So, right? Sevens would sound something like this. And uh, period-wise, way back then, there would be really no need to go beyond. Because back then, it was pretty much a semi-literate drumming community, meaning a lot of them couldn't read. Most of them couldn't read music. And it was like, look, this is what you signed on to do. You signed into the Army to do this. Here's your government-issued drum. You need to do what I do. And then it had to come from memory. So a lot of that other embellishment and stuff over time probably came from uh, either it, better drummers would add stuff because they could and probably from bad memories. Ha <laughs> ha! I wouldn't know anything about that. So when you do this, be sure that, it, of course, from the period, pretty much everything is right hand lead. Everything's right hand, you know. That kind of thing. It doesn't go. It doesn't switch off. Everything was always right hand. Boom. You know, everything right handed. 
So when you get to the paradiddles, make sure that this accent matches what you've been doing with the right, that, that you've been setting with the right. Okay? Uh, be sure that everything is very clear. Everything is very clear and march like, like a marching. It, it feels when you when you're just listening to it. It feels like a march. I find a lot of times when I hear it, people overplay the inner stuff, which is basically the meat. You know, like uh, they'll do something like this. And I, I prefer it personally. That, there's nothing wrong with that, and it might have been played that way great, great, great grandfathers ago or whatever. But these days, with, with what we're doing, uh, we're now with, with modern drums and things like that, I prefer to keep the meat a little lower, a little softer, even though the whole thing is really kind of loud because it was meant to be. It was meant to be heard a few miles away and going, hey, this is what's going on over there. Woo! Wow. Nope. Don't want to go over there. No, no, uh, no. We're going that way. Why? I um uh, we're getting shot at. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go this way. Um, that was my signal for see ya. You know what I mean? A lot of times when these guys were playing stuff, they were like being shot at, kind of thing. You know, this was their way of communication. There was no telephone and walkie-talkies and all that. Hey, tell them over there that we're in trouble. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, you see me almost hit me. So they're playing under those kind of conditions. So nowadays, we can have a little liberty and, and, and play it with a little bit of feel, okay? So I like to do heavy accents, but I don't like to do what I've seen some others do is that, that accent thing like, I like to do, I like to do the straight and narrow and then the accents. I don't, I don't like the accent, the uh, way of doing things. Um, so, uh, play with that and uh, we'll get the other part again and remember just make sure it sounds like a march okay and have fun with it because um, probably a lot of the people that played it way back when weren't having fun with it some of the ones that embellished stuff were probably having fun with it but uh, you know hope it helps and uh Oh, wow, this is going to be a short vid, and it says, oh, eight minutes. I just talk too much. But I, I had a lot of fun with that, um, I'm going this away, y'all are in trouble stuff. And, uh, man, I'm hungry. I'm going to make me a sandwich, okay? All right. Hey, man, y'all have fun with it. Uh, leave some comments or something. Tell me if it helps, and I'll do the other part later and whatnot. And uh, remember, it's just drums. Have fun. Thanks, guys.